Okay, well, I'm delighted to be joined by former Peterborough United striker Connor Washington. Um, Connor, I want to talk to you about your um, your time at Posh. Um, you actually signed, I think, on the day that we lost five four away at Oldham, um, and I think it went out about six o'clock that night. What can you remember about the transfer? Because I think it was in the pipeline for quite some time. Yeah, it had been in the pipeline for a few weeks actually. Did, did Brit score a hat trick that game? I think there was, uh, all I remember was announcing that we signed a striker after conceding five and thinking that won't go down particularly well. I remember thinking the opposite and thinking, geez, this team scores a lot of goals. I would like to get in on that. <laughs> I mean, um, but yeah, like you said, it had been, been in the pipeline for a couple of weeks. And I actually had to go beg the uh, Newport manager to let me go at the time just because it was such a good move with such, to such a big club at the time with such a good reputation uh, of developing strikers from sort of my background, but I just couldn't turn it down. And obviously growing up sort of 20 minutes away as well was a big, was a big pull. Yeah, obviously when you were at St Ives, were you, were you always looking at Peterborough and thinking that's not the dream, I suppose, but you obviously wanted to play football league um, football and that was the closest club to you? Yeah, at the time it just felt like a total pipe dream, to be honest. The level I was playing at was not even remotely close to professional football, so... Um, I think Peterborough was probably too big a step in my mind at the time, <clears throat> which I think was shown when I came on trial for the, I think it was supposed to be two weeks. I think I managed about two days before I realised the standard at the time was just, just too high for me, simple as that. So um, I, was, I was more looking at um, clubs sort of a little bit more local and uh, just a couple of steps higher rather than, um, I think they might have even been in the championship at the time when I first trialled. So. What, what, what did you find? You, you say about you only lasted two days. What was it? Was it the intensity? Was it the fitness? Was it a combination of everything? Yeah, it was, it was a combination of everything. To be honest, um, I've done a couple of things. I remember was it Big Ron Atkinson did the. Uh, mm -hmm. I was on that. I played in that game. Um, so obviously, I had like a small affiliation with Peterborough that way, um, and I think it was the it was the youth team that I trained with over the summer just for that couple of days. I remember just thinking, like, I'm going to have to stand out here to have any chance of breaking into the first team. Because I think I was about 19 at the time, 18, 19. And I was just amazed by how good technically everybody was. And I was just so far off of it. And it was um, just a bit of a mind-blowing experience, to be honest. So I just went away, um, went back to St. Ives, played a few more games, and ended up getting a move to the conference and obviously built from there. But, yeah, at the time, it was like, wow, if this is the standard that I'm going to have to play at to playing the football league then I need to I need to get better somehow. You mentioned that big run trial game. Um I, I can't remember who actually who won that, but I, I remember watching the game and thinking, you know, what who's wrong gonna pick here? Did did you did you feel a bit weird playing in that kind of game? Because cameras were everywhere, weren't they? Yeah, it was a strange experience. I think it was like three or four trial processes before and um Robbo was there. Robbo was there at every trial so I I, I knew him uh, quite well before obviously I ended up signing and uh, in that game I think we lost I can't remember who we played now but we lost 5-1 and I scored this horrendous goal our only goal so I thought I'm a shoe in for this no airtime whatsoever I must have been terrible in the game um, I, I can't remember who won it either actually I think it was, there was, there was the name Sean White is in my head for some reason I, I don't know yeah Long, longish hair I yeah. think he had yeah yeah. yeah, it's crazy, really. Like, to think back, it feels like a, a different lifetime, to be honest. But, mm. um, yeah, it's funny to look back and think that I was miles away from, from it, obviously playing at London Road, and then managed to play there nearly 100 times, I think. Mm. When, when you made that move from Newport then, those first couple of days, did you feel a little bit more comfortable? I mean, obviously, you'd had that time at Newport to really get used to conference football. What was the... Food first few days like was it was it tough was it easy to sort of mix in quite quickly? The lads were brilliant. Like they had some really good characters at the time, but I think it's probably been the same every time I've signed at a new club. I seem to make the jumps pretty quickly. Um, so going from League Two at the time to a team that was doing really well in League One with like obviously Britt was scoring goals for fun at the time. Talking about him getting moves even when I just signed, to be honest. So. Um, it's, such, it's always such a big step up and I think with the route that I had into the game it was a bit of a it's just a bit of a mental it was just tough mentally I think mm -hmm. to come into an environment where the lads were brilliant like Danny Swanson was ridiculous technically Nikki Joe's a ridiculous Tommy Rowe 
um, and you just have to adapt really, really quickly and it's just sink or swim and luckily I managed to uh, shoot on my way into the team and score a few goals towards the end of that season. Yeah, you mentioned there's quite a lot of strikers. I mean, the club have always had quite a lot of strikers. As a, as a new frontman coming in, did you relish the opportunity to to try and you know get into the side? Because it wasn't a case of right, there's only two strikers and you're going to play. There was a number of strikers you had to get past. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we all sort of brought different things to the table, and I think we were really unlucky that year um, not to go further than we did in, in the playoffs. To be honest, because we had such a good team. Um, but I think, like you say, going back to the bringing the front men in and the relationships that they've all had and goals they've scored, I think a lot of that's got to go down to the way that Dara runs the club, to be honest, because he he wants this philosophy of fast-flowing attacking football and like the eyes light up as a striker when you hear that Peter want you. So, um, and obviously teams and managers and everything's come in and have tried to play that way. So it's uh, such such a good club to play for if you're a, a striker coming through. Yeah, do you think people um, genuinely look at us from the outside, as, as a, particularly as a striker, and it's almost like, I'd love to be at that club. It's almost like you'd put Peterborough on a, on a list because you know you're going to get the opportunity to score goals. Or more so, perhaps, than you, know, you look at other bigger clubs in our division, for example, you might want to join us over another club because of that reputation. Yeah, definitely. I think the, the atmosphere that's cultivated between the owner, the managers that they've had, and the fans especially, to be honest, um, it's just such a good place to go and showcase what a good footballer you are. Um, they've never really been associated with being like a gritty, grinding out results team. And like for attacking players, you don't want to be part of those teams. Um, you want to be part of the teams that are, like you say, winning, losing games 5-4, winning games 5-4, and trying to score goals at every opportunity. And um, yeah, like you said, you just relish those opportunities to go and play for clubs like that. Yeah, you're actually a striker who scored um, quite. I mean, you never scored with your head. I can't remember you ever scoring many headers. I did score once. You did, yeah, yeah, it probably just hit you. But um, I'd, I'd imagine that because when you look at sort of your portfolio of goals, there are a lot of different kind of goals. You, you were you were someone who could run off the shoulder. You were someone who could score from long range. You were someone who could work the channel. Did did you feel you had to mould your game into into something that you probably weren't when you first arrived? Yeah, definitely. I, I became much more a complete striker through a multitude of reasons, really, from playing with people like Britt, who showed me that you didn't have to just run off the shoulder all the time. You can come and link the play. With Nicky Ajose as well, who's a really clever player, um, good at getting in pockets. Um, and obviously the way the manager wanted to play, you had to be involved in the game all the time. So, um, yeah, it was just great fun, to be honest, just learning, learning on the job and helping the team and scoring goals. Yeah, did you feel pressure when you didn't score goals? Because speaking to other strikers, you know, they deal with it in different ways. You can go through a barren run and be beating yourself up. You can be someone who just accepts that you're going to miss chances. Is it something that affected you or did you just try and put it to the back of your mind and, and deal with it as best you could? I went for a few different ones, to be honest. One of the, the one that sticks in my mind the most was the season that Graham Wesley came in. I think I must have missed about 200 chances by the time I started scoring that season. It was incredible. I remember one game, I think it was Coventry. And there was a couple of games that actually stick in my mind. Um, just everything I hit just would not go in. It was incredible. I think like the loot in the FA Cup game, I scored in that game, but I could have had like six goals. Like it was ridiculous. And it's one of those ones where half of your brain's thinking, well, I'm getting the chances. So I'm doing something right. The team's doing something right to get me the chances. And it just felt like it was just inevitable that it was going to go in. And then obviously that season they ended up going in. But um, in other runs you've had, you, you're not getting chances and you're thinking, oh, no, that's a cause for concern. But I think you just have to get out on the training pitch, or me personally anyway, and just try and score as many as you can in training because you have to take that into the game. So mm, I always find it interesting with strikers when they're not getting chances because you can go one of two ways. You can go searching for the ball and end up ridiculously deep because you want to have touches of the ball. Or you, you can never mind game that. <laughs> or you can get, <laughs> you end up making like five or six different runs and you just knack yourself out for, for no reason whatsoever. I guess, I guess you've got to try and remain disciplined and, and patient in your mind. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's probably the most important thing, like you said, that going towards the ball was never my never my strong point. I didn't particularly enjoy doing that. I always like running behind. But like you say, you force the runs. You're just running before the guy's even had a chance to look up. He's not even got the ball under control and you're sprinting through. And then you're constantly trying to readjust from there. 
But when you're scoring goals, you, should, you probably get this a lot when you've ever interviewed strikers. It just happens so naturally. Everything just seems like everything you do just seems to result in a chance or, or, or a goal. Yeah, it's weird because when I spoke to Craig McCall Smith, he, he actually said that one thing he hated was one on ones because yeah, his mind was racing so much that it was very hard to sort of go into the moment and, and be more instinctive with your finishing. When you were going clean through on goal, because I, I, I seem to remember that you, you went through a period whereby you you were like, devastating one on one, like dinks over keepers, you know, going round. Yeah. Did were you someone that could slow it completely down and just know what you were going to do? I think when I was playing well and when I was scoring goals, definitely. But similar to uh, Craig, I think it's difficult sometimes because he was obviously a very similar profile to me. You had probably more time than most other strikers would have in those situations because you were quicker, because your runs were good. And uh, it's like you can feel the, the crowds up because they're anticipating a goal. Uh, you're anticipating a goal. Everybody in the, their the te- their teams anticipating a goal. Whoever's passed you the ball's anticipating a goal, and it's trying to, like you say, calm yourself down in those moments and pick the right spot. But I think the sheer volume of one on ones that me and probably Craig and Cal Smith had as well um, just made it look like maybe we weren't as good as them out of a strike as other strikers. But in reality, I think the conversion rate was probably relatively high for for both of us. Mm. Obviously, when um, Darren left, and obviously we went through a, a, a period, obviously of uncertainty with managers, and then Graham Wesley obviously came in, and he, he was completely different in terms of style. Um, obviously, had, I suppose when you when you look at Robbo uh, being in charge, I mean, we went on an incredible run, um, culminating in that win at Doncaster. I think it was about six wins in a row, wasn't it? Yeah. Carl Vassell, I think, scored on the break, and the amount of fans behind the goal, it was a real feel-good factor. Um, was that an interesting time, a, a difficult time, a hard really to judge because obviously it all came at the, you know, at once in terms of the victories? Yeah, speaking of that goal, Vass had actually got it inside our half, beat about six people and then tried to beat another man and I stole it off his toe and put it in. <laughs> Ruthless strikers, you see. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Um, but yeah, I think when obviously um, Darren left the, the first time when I was there, it was... I think we all just it was we had such a good team, and I think we let him down really badly in that in that period. Um, it's the the team and the club, and obviously, obviously Darren as well. I had such good success with the team that a couple of bad results seemed awful. And like, like I said, I think we just let him down really badly there. So it was a bit of a shot in the arm when he left, which is a shame to say. But obviously, Robbo came in, inherited a good team, didn't really change too much, to be honest. Um, and then I think we probably just played more to the standards that we really expected of ourselves. But yeah, it was, it was a really good good period, actually. I think, I'm not sure where we ended up finishing that season. It wasn't particularly high, I don't think, but um, scored some goals towards the end of that season and was looking forward to the next season. Yeah, Grant McCann was assistant at that time to, to Robbo. Um, speaking to him as well, it's, it's interesting when people go from playing to coaching it's so hard when it's you throw, thrown into that same club because obviously you know everybody, you're mates with everybody. You have to try and find a fine balance. Did he do that quite well? Was he quite was he good good cop bad cop? Yeah, he was. He was actually relatively good at it. To be fair, um, bearing in mind he wasn't the most enthusiastic mm-hmm. runner in training. He was uh, very 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 hot on that for the lads. Um, which was obviously threw up some banter here and there. But no, I think he handled it really well. And it's no surprise to any of us that have played with him or obviously played under him as well that he's gone on to do really well as a manager because he's got a great footballing philosophy and was obviously a very clever player himself. So he's managed to take that into management and um, he's doing really well at the minute. To be honest then, when when Graham Wesley came in, because I I remember the time whereby everybody, all the players were speaking to other players and you hear so many different stories. Um, I think Michael Bostwick was probably key to that because he played played with him, yeah. played under him previously. Did you relish the opportunity of a new manager coming in? Did you worry? Did you? Because I suppose when you're in the team, the last thing you want is a change. Yeah, it was a strange. It was a strange situation. I think at the time it was Steve Evans, Graham Wesley, and obviously they're both big personalities and have got their own way of doing things. So, but the things we'd heard from Bosley were like we didn't want him to be manager at all when we first heard about him and things he was doing and uh, obviously had a tough time at Preston as well um, which I think is, is a bit tough on him to be honest with the, the squad he inherited and what the things he had to do behind the scenes and whatever but 
um, yeah, at the time we were thinking, oh my God, we're going to be in nine to five every day. We're going to have, be running constantly. We're going to be playing hoofball. But it couldn't have been any further from the truth, to be honest. And I, I don't think Dara would have hired him if, if that would have been the case. So. Yeah, again, that's the thing. He, he, he worked you hard, but he, it was, it was, there was no real long days. It was just intense training, wasn't it? And that's what I guess you... Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. yeah, everything about him is just intense, yeah. but it, it worked, so... Yeah, because certain managers can be good tacticians, certain managers can be good man managers, some some people can have a blend of, of both. For you, he was perfect in, in, in terms of the response that he got from you, in terms of the goals that you scored. Um, was that because he knew how to sort of get you going? Yeah, it's a couple, yeah definitely a combination of things. That he, he managed to set the team up in a way and sort of shoehorn players into that team that were perfect for a striker like me like getting Marcus and Erhan in the same team is obviously proving tricky just because of the, the type of players they are but I mean as a striker that likes to run in behind playing with those two players was an absolute joy to be honest and there's no way I would have scored as many goals as I did without without those two playing behind me so um, yeah it's very much like he came in the door and said I, I genuinely believe that you could be our number nine so I'm going to try and set this team up to get you chances and if you take the chances then you stay in the team so it was as simple as that really um, and I think a lot of the lads just bought into what he was bringing with the hard work and the fitness and everything like that and, and the way we were playing as well so it's just it seemed at the time as just a bit of a match made in heaven Yeah the goals flowed I think it culminated in the hat-trick you scored at Scunthorpe um, you can remember that for two reasons well, obviously you had to, I think Martin Samuelson came off the bench that day um, yeah. and, um, and made his debut but when, when when you're in the zone, as we spoke previously, it's very easy to, to get the goals that you got that day because they were all, I mean, one was from the outside of the box, I think, it curled, curled into the yeah. one-on-one, one was a one-on-one. It, it obviously felt like everything you touched was turning into goals. Yeah, and I think, uh, obviously, Graham West, he had a big part to play in even just simple little things like, um, it must have been relatively late on just before I'd scored the third. And uh, Marcus had got to the byline and crossed it in. And obviously, I was a little bit fatigued. I didn't get into a position that I should have been in. And he called me over and screaming at me. I think we're 3-0 up. I've scored two. He's screaming at me, do you not want to score a hat-trick? Do you not want to score a hat-trick? Like, why are you not getting in the six-yard box? So, it was little things like that. Just being, He was just relentless. And I think strikers that score goals all the time, really regularly at the top level, they've all got that attitude. They're just constantly relentless, getting themselves in positions, missing chances, scoring chances, but they never stop getting in, the, in the positions. And um, yeah, like you say, at, at the time, everything I, everything I was touching was going in. It was just such a good time to, to be playing for the club. I guess um, there must have been talk behind the scenes with regards to you know people being interested in you at that point because... I think you left in the January transfer window that, that year. Um, yeah. At what point did you start hearing things? Was it before January? Was it a quick move? Was it? How did it all come about? Uh, it's probably around about mid-December when I was in the middle of the, the good run. and I think I'd been playing well that season, to be honest, in terms of my general play. Um, and I just needed to add the goals, and obviously they, they started coming. Um, obviously the team was doing well, which really helped. Uh, so probably about mid-December, yeah. And then the, the, the rumours started. There was a couple of different clubs and obviously ended up moving to QPR. Relative, I think it was relatively late in the window, actually. I can't, I can't quite remember. But, yeah, it was, just, it was a really good time to be, to be part of the club. And I, I genuinely feel like we would have done really well that season if, if I'd have stayed as well. Because, like I said, the team was set up to get me chances. So, not, I'm not for one minute saying that I'd have dragged the team to the playoffs or anything like that. But to lose the player that you're trying to create chances for obviously makes it makes it difficult for anything. Yeah. Were you actually apprehensive about moving? I don't want to talk too much about your career after Posh, but obviously when you're in a good goal scoring form, there must be part of your mind thinking, well, if I go, is it going to be the same? Do I do I, you know, sacrifice that and try and get to the end of the season? What was going through your head at the time? Yeah, I think as obviously as a footballer, your career is so short that you really feel like you have to strike while the iron's hot and also, I think I'd scored like 13 in 13 or something, so it doesn't really get much hot than that. So I felt like I had to leave just because of career development and obviously progression in that respect. But I think like what you alluded to is not going to be the same and everything, you have to get to that point again where you're building relationships with players who are going to get you the ball. 
And I've probably, I've probably not had that since, to be honest, since I left Peterborough in terms of how comfortable I felt with a team. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a tough call. But obviously, at the same time, my career after Peterborough has been, been pretty brilliant and more than I could have ever hoped for. So I think at the end of the day, it was the right decision. But yeah, I was definitely apprehensive about leaving. I think you, you scored 33 goals in 94 appearances, which is just, I mean, my maths is rubbish, but it's, it's just below the one in three mark, um, or around that, certainly. Um, it's weird, because when, when, when people talk about strikers that this football club's had in terms of the goals that they've scored, you, you almost become a little bit of a forgotten striker, and I don't really know why that is, because, again, you are playing through a period where there wasn't, obviously, an enormous success, but your individual record was as good as, as good as, many that's had this uh, shirt on in the past so I guess you look back on it with a lot of pride and, and when you see the record you, you can not really understand why people don't themselves yeah I think um, I probably was never the easiest on the eye if you like with I wasn't doing fancy skills and getting the ball and turning and running at people but like you say the goal record I, I do look on I do look back on that with pride and I think it's something that I would have bet I would have got even more goals as well, obviously, with the run I was on. Um, it had taken me a while to settle into the team and uh, with a few different managers, etc. And, and like you say, there wasn't, it wasn't a pati- particularly successful period at, at the club. Um, and I, I think playing with people like Britt, you were, I was always going to be the second striker to him at the time because he was scoring so many goals. So I think by the, that, the first sort of five, six months I was there, I was pretty, just, pretty much just trying to put things on plates for Brit, to be honest. So when I became the main striker, if you will, um, I felt a lot more comfortable and started to score more goals. So, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a decent record. But obviously, the, I think the other thing that probably doesn't stand me in great stead with the, the fans and the historians would be the, the amount of goals that actually should have been as, a, um, as, as opposed to how many it actually was. Mm. Just finally, you played with um, some interesting characters during your time. I'm thinking Suleimani, Koulibaly for one. Obviously, yeah. you had Erhan, who, who was um, a, a real character as well. W- was that a, a really good dressing room in terms of the sort of fun element of football, if you like? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was a great bunch of lads all around similar ages. And then obviously you had people like Old Man Bozzy as well, who was a 50-year-old man in a 30-year-old man's body anyway. But that no, was brilliant. It was a really good period of uh, of my life in general. Uh, I was at a good age and I was really enjoying my football and getting into getting to share it with with some great lads as well. Even I'm not sure. I think it was about two and a half years I was there, and obviously saw the player turnover was relatively high at the time. But it was just a, a real good atmosphere the whole time I was there, and not once did the dressing room ever really fall apart and crumble, which is uh, obviously a real testament to the the players that get brought into the club.